anytime someone loses their life, it's a tragedy. Well, Murdoch certainly uh, captivated the nation, and I'd probably say even some parts of the world. My results didn't convict or exonerate Alec. My results were a theory that was accepted that ruled out a lot of some theories, bogus theories, and some that probably had a little bit of truth to them that were pitched by a lot of expert witnesses for the defense. My name is Kenneth Lee Kinsey, and I'm the owner operator of Kenny Kinsey and Associates LLC. My degree is uh, a degree in criminal justice. I have a PhD from Walden, and the year of graduation was 2019. I was raised modest means. Uh, my parents didn't have a lot, but uh, they, they provided a lot of love. My father was a career firefighter. Now, later on, my mother also entered law enforcement uh, and she ended up retiring in law enforcement many years back. I lost her in 2018, but shortly before that, she retired. You know, I was that kid that uh, I was probably more prone to get into trouble, but I didn't because my parents would find out. So, you know, it was pretty uneventful uh, time growing up. I, I didn't get in a lot of trouble like other kids. I, I did, you know, little devilish things, but uh, I was always terrified that my parents would find out. I was the first one to ever go to college in my immediate family. It was more to make my parents proud. You know, 20 years later, I'm sitting around, I'm in law enforcement. I, I'm pretty much established at that point. I've worked from a reserve deputy sheriff, which was free, to a shift supervisor, to an investigator, to a crime scene investigator, to a special agent at the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, and then back to the sheriff's office. So I was pretty comfortable. And uh, looking toward the, the twilight uh, of the career, and. Five or six years later, I'm like, well, I wonder if I can get in Walden and work on a PhD, because I got to do something when I retire. And Walden was phenomenal. You know, hopefully if you have a foundation in a certain area, you're not going to need so much from your foundation. It's the process and knowing how to get there that makes Walden an excellent choice. But I think it's, it's, what do you think you can do to make this world a better place? And the thing I can say about Walden is they wanted you to achieve, they wanted it to be positive. So it, it just worked out perfectly for me. And I believe it's all about being nice, understanding differences, and being able to address many, many diverse people that are on this journey with you. Uh, about half my career was just a, a, a beat investigator, just working cases. But I really think I had some skill when it came to the crime scene part. We were at a, uh, a death scene and it wasn't a homicide or anything. An elderly lady passed away in her home and she didn't have any family members close, so no one found her for a while. We went in and we did what we had to do and the coroner was there and we came back out and all of my cohorts were, uh, you know, they were in the bushes, they, they were sick and the sheriff at the time drove up 
And he looked at me and he said, uh, you okay? I said, yes, sir. I said, but it's, you know, it's kind of rough here. I said, but I'm fine. And he said, well, next week, uh, pack your bags because you're going to CSI school. And I said, CSI school? What is, I, I didn't know this was before Grissom was on TV. And so it evolved to that, you know, that was three weeks. And then I never came back here, I rolled into camera school. And then you roll into fingerprint school and bloodstain school and footwear and tire wear school. And I was gone for like six months. And, you know, at that, that was the pivotal point, really, for me. A lot of people believe that crime scene reconstruction, shooting reconstruction, accident reconstruction, they think that's recreation, like you see on TV. It's not. It's answering a few specific questions that could have directed the way this action took place. You know, you may not have that one element that proves anything, but you take a little bit of several elements and put them together, and that takes you past that hesitation between not guilty and guilty or, or between, you know, inclusion and exclusion. I've always tried to root for the underdog. Uh, if, if someone is deemed guilty, I like to start on the other end of the spectrum and work it my own way. And I've, I've just been kind of hard headed. I don't like to take someone's word at it. I, I want to see it for myself. But I've never planted evidence. I've never lied under oath. And I've never put a man or woman in jail that I don't think needs to be there. So I, I believe you've just got to have your own code. Your code doesn't have to be my code, but you have to follow a code. I'd given up on the criminal part. I, I ran at one time 46 counties in South Carolina with a great team, you know, handling death scenes and violent crime scenes. I, I'd worked many, many here in Orangeburg, South Carolina with a great team over the years. And But you just put that away. You say, well, you know, I'll work some civil cases and that kind of thing. And then the thing that was Murdoch happened and it just opened up. It, it, it opened a whole new world to me and, and it made my degree even that much more important to me. So when the Murdoch tragedy occurred, I reached out to Captain Ryan Neal, who was the uh, supervisory agent in charge of the Low Country, and I just offered help. And he asked me if I would look at some blood stains because one of my proficiencies is blood stain uh, analysis. And it evolved into many aspects of the crime scene and ended up coming on with the team. I called Dr. Kenny Kinsey. Literally, I do not remember the walk to the stand. I was just praying that I wouldn't trip. And you can see when I opened the water bottle, my hand was shaking just a little bit. But it's in that moment when you hear them call your name and instantly you're like, am I going to be accepted or is my testimony going to be rejected? I have boots on the ground uh, processed north of 800 uh, death scenes. Not all of those are homicide. In your expert opinion, is there any way that Paul's arms were raised when he shot, when he suffered that first blast to the chest. I see no possible way his arms were up when he suffered that first shotgun wound. If you look at that green funnel, that is approximately the shot shell path. And I used a dowel rod and I used a protractor on the uh, doorknob side of that door frame and I ran it up and that's what helped me establish the angle of that shot pattern. If an attorney's getting too pushy, or they're trying to rush you, because they're trying to get you to say something that you wish you could take back, but now you can't. And it doesn't take anything but a slip of a tongue. Say something wrong, get tongue tied. So that's the trajectory, that's where the barrel of the shotgun would have had to have been. In my opinion, yes sir. <clears throat> okay, thank you, no further questions. You may step down. Now, once I testified, it was like a load of bricks off of you. And then I'm sitting there and, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm just an observer. Testified the first time I thought it was over. 
Creighton come to me and said, look, we got to put you back up. So I was willing to do whatever the team wanted. Your analysis. It's kind of like a little bit of cat and mouse with the attorneys who I have a lot of respect for, but their job's to get me tangled up. My job is to do whatever I can do to stick to my results. I thought in my head, I said, if he says your analysis one more time, I'm gonna bust him. And then under your analysis. Your analysis. <laughs> your analysis. Oh, my analysis, okay. Your sorry. analysis. Yes, sir. <laughs> We're not there, we're not there, this is, we're still in court. I wasn't trying to be funny. You do that just to throw them, throw them off. And, and then you see this pellet here in the... Um... I did not see that, but I'm vertically challenged and, and I wish I could have looked up and saw that pellet, but I did not see that pellet lodged in that door frame. But I'm glad Mr. Maybach, Pombach, however you say his name, I'm glad he found it because uh, that even proves my point a little bit more. You've got an expert up there that has presented to the jurors that buckshot is in a line like a mama duck with all the baby ducks behind it. And that's just not how it works. Well, the, uh, so I'm gonna ask you, mm -hmm. according to your shot angle, how would a pellet get there? It's really, I mean, it, it, the cone, it's a cone. Mr. Griffin, I've already described how shot pattern works. It's a, it's a cone. So this, this missed his head, you think? No, no, it come out of his head. It threw him off. And, and he, he's, a, he's a very competent attorney. I mean, he's been a UA, uh, AUSA. I missed the verdict because I said this will take into the night. So uh, I said, I'm going home. Well, when I walked in the house, the verdict was being read. Well, the next morning I was there and a good friend of mine who was over courthouse security came to me and said, the jury wants to talk to you. And so they led me in there and they thanked me for explaining the evidence to them. And uh, it just tore me up. I mean, I, I've always been kind of like John Wayne, but I kind of went to Dr. Punk at that moment because uh, you know then that you were connecting with them. You know, it's important for you to do that. And I felt like they were really receptive to, uh, to my explanation. I have publicly stated now that I believe the jury made the right decision. I always said that I didn't want to be defined by the badge and the gun. I probably had a couple more years in me, but I've been given a blessing and an opportunity, and I'm gonna do it as long as I can do it with integrity. And if I get to that point where I don't want to do it anymore, then working in the hardware store is an honorable profession. And, you know, I'm good with that any piece of advice to anyone who is considering continuing education is just have a direction and the folks at Walden uh, will help you get there. I always wanted my own action figure, you know, M16, M14, at least a big old handgun. And thanks to Miss Stephanie Truesdale, I got a baby doll that looks like me and it's holding a, a dowel rod, but I'm so proud of that. I want some Edisto River mud between my toes. I, I want a fishing line in the water, or I want to be sitting in a field with a bunch of friends, you know, waiting on, on birds or, or whatever. You know, whatever's in season, I, I'm ready to harvest. I, I just, I love the camaraderie and I love the outdoors. If I could do it all over again, Absolutely, I can't say no. But I don't make the evidence. I make the evidence easy to understand.